The White Tower is an enigma wrapped in a mystery, wrapped in a traditional Norman camembert. The building has strange openings, and nobody knows what they're for. The walls are made of all different kinds of stone, and look at these giant dark lines! What were the Normans doing when they built this? Let's get the scoop! Is it the six o'clock news? Is it an ice cream? No, it's Scooper Woman. I want to know how the White Tower changed as it was being built by the Normans. So, like an importer of prize fruit from the Middle East, let's look back at our big dates. We've got 1066. William absolutely nails the Battle of Hastings and gets crowned king. At the other end, we've got 1100. Like a refurbished academy school, the White Tower was finished enough to take in its first ever prisoner. But what happened in between? Our archaeologist has been doing some digging, not literally. Thanks, Jez. The Normans didn't start building the White Tower until the 1070s, but they needed something to keep this side of London down. Down to the ground. Stay down, Anglo-Saxons. Yeesh. Before the White Tower, the Normans dug ditches and built cheap wooden palisades, and it's been suggested they might have even built a wooden castle here. The Normans did have a habit of bringing flat pack wooden castles around with them, which could be set up quickly to provide immediate defence. And even when they moved on to stone buildings, their approach was as low cost as possible. Like the red bits in these city walls are actually recycled brick from Roman times. So in building the White Tower, those awesome Normans reduced, reused and recycled. Trowel drop. Hang about. Cheap wood. Recycled bits from the Romans, flat pack. What is this, an all-conquering Norman army or a disappointing trip to a generic homeware store? Norman Mason, you're just a bunch of stingy Stanleys, aren't you? Uh, no, no, no. When we began to build the tower in the 1070s, we were building a tower fit for a king. We went very Romanesque this season, which is so in, I love it. Uh, rounded arches for the windows, columns inspired by ancient Greece and Rome, and blind arcading, of course, which is an arch that is filled in with stone. And much of the stone was this gorgeous, specially imported kind from Caen in Normandy. Oh la la, très bien! Sounds as pretty as a hashtag no filter brunch out with me and my gal pals. But our own analysis of the different levels of the White Tower show the stones you use changes over time, from fine cut ashlar to just cheap rubble. And there's a big time gap in the dendrochronology. Dendrochronology? Stop avoiding my question. Why do your building materials change more often than a nervous teen getting ready for the party at Cool Jennifer's house? Zut alors, I admit it. There is a short break in the building of the White Tower. You heard it here first. The White Tower was not built continuously. Instead, there was a break beginning in 1083 at the latest and building doesn't start again until the 1090s. Why? Was William too busy? Fighting in England, fighting in France, building other castles, running out of money for now? We aren't sure. Back to our detective, Franklin Detective, who's detected some devilishly distracting details. Frank. I know where you live! Don't make me play bad cop with you guys, OK? Frank, stop talking to the wall, for goodness sake. No worries, Jazz. I've got this. Saved by the spade. Mindiana, give me some salty fact, you mud-loving miracle. <laughs> These markings on the wall are soot. The dark, carbonised substance left by smoke. They show a roof that used to be here. The smoke from the fires would drift upwards, collecting on the underside, leaving the roof shape visible. Wait a second. There used to be a roof in here down that low? How could people even stand up? Franklin, close your eyes. Imagine back to Norman times. The floor you're standing on doesn't exist. Oh, yeah! I mean, it didn't exist until centuries later. So this is the roof of the room below. It was an incredibly high ceiling, meaning that from the outside, the building looked like it had more floors than it really did. I knew those Normans were up to something. Blam, blam, blam! Those are mysteries of the White Tower getting shot out the water. But here's a query lodged in my head like a botched ear piercing. What about those holes in the wall from earlier? Heard about these? They're pretty niche. I mean, they literally are called niches, so it's not even a joke, really. Maybe they were used for kindling wood, salt for the fire, or to keep something warm and dry. We aren't totally sure. Then why are we looking at them, Lucian? 
because there's something real people use when they're living at the White Tower. Talking of which... I knew you wouldn't disappoint. Drop me some beautiful truths, Dursley. It's a toilet! Or garderobe, as the Normans called it. Why are we looking at a toilet? Well, there are several garderobes over there on the north side of the tower, so why is an extra one here on the eastern side? Could be for luxury accommodation, complete with your very own toilet or hole in the side of a building. Fit for a king. The White Tower's all holes, really. Some for keeping things in, others for... Thank you, Lucian Dursley. Culture is cool. Get back in your toilet. So, we know the White Tower was being built from the 1070s, with a break in the 1080s, and was pretty near finished by 1100. It's a bit cheap, a bit recycled, and a bit luxury, and showed the latest fashions in Norman architecture. What do you make of all of this? Which do you think were the most important developments in the building of the White Tower? Thanks for watching The Scoop, turning the ugly duckling of the past into a swan of truth. Apart from Frank, who'll always be an overgrown beard with legs. Hey!